let's be honest, you're here because you know you suck at Counter-Strike. Well today, you're going to learn how to write your very own wall hacks, so you can start destroying enemy players without having to spend hours grinding the game. But how does the wall hack work, I hear you ask? Well first, we look deep into the game's memory to find a list of all the players currently in the game. This is known as the entity list. Then we look at each entity and find their position in the game. With this, we can perform a matrix transformation to get the coordinates of the player on our screen, which we can use to render our ESP. Warning, the code which is written in this video is complex and not easy to write. Furthermore, it will be detected by the entity unless you know what you're doing and take rather rigorous steps to prevent detection. Please use the dash insecure flag when launching your game to disable the entity cheat. Secondly, you will need the DirectX SDK installed to use this project. This will be linked in the description. Finally, I cannot help you with your debugging problem. So if you're struggling, figure it out. It's not my problem. Once your Visual Studio is open, navigate to the top right corner, hit clone a repository, copy and paste in the link in the description and hit clone. Next, once your solution is open, in the top right corner, add two new folders, one called cheats and the other called SDK. In your cheats folder, create two new files, esp.h and esp.cpp. In the SDK folder, create two new header files, one called client.dll.hpp and the other called offsets.hpp. Next, head to the other link in the description to the A2X dumper, navigate to the generate folder, and copy and paste the contents of their client.dl.hpp and their offsets.hpp into your own folders in your Visual Studio solution. Next, open up your ESP.h and first we want to include the vector library so that we can use the vectors to cache our entity pointers. Next, don't forget to include the renderer, the client.dl.hpp and the offsets.hpp. The rendering we will use to render our ESP and the other bits we will use to grab offsets from the game. Next, create your view matrix structure, which will be made up of 16 float byte array. Next, inside your ESP namespace, create a vector called entities, which we'll use to cache our entity pointers, a view matrix VM, which we'll use to store the view matrix, as well as variables, which will store the process ID and module base address of our game. Next, create four functions. First, called frame, which will be executed every frame, which will render the ESP. Next, loop, which will grab our entity caching in a separate thread. And finally, our render, which will be used to handle the DirectX logic to draw our ESP. Finally, we want to create a world to screen function, which will translate our 3D world points into 2D screen points. Next, in your ESP.cpp file, rewrite the function prototypes that we defined in the ESP namespace. Next, we're going to write the frame function. First, we want to clear our renderer device. Then we're going to want to begin the scene. Next, we're going to want to end the scene and then call present. In between these two function calls, the begin scene and end scene, we're going to want to call our render function, which is where we'll call our actual ESP from. Now, we're going to write our ESP loop function. First, we're going to get the entity list by reading the memory from the module base at the entity list offset. And then after that, we're going to grab the local player pawn by reading the module base plus the local player pawn offset. Then to get the team, we're going to read a byte at the local player pawn plus the team offset. We will use this team byte later so that we can compare it to other entities so that we only draw the ESP over enemy entities. Next, create another wild true loop and inside of this loop, allocate some memory to an STD vector which we're going to use as our cache buffer. Inside this cache, we will store the entity point Next, we're going to create a for loop to iterate through each ent entity. First, from the entity list, we will find the list entry. From this list entry, we will then find the entity controller using some bit manipulation. Then, from this object, we will add the player pawn offset to get the con entity controller pawn. And finally, using more bit manipulation, we will use this entity controller pawn to get the entity itself and then place it in the, e in the entity buffer. Finally, we will copy the contents of the entity buffer into our entity cache vector. Then we will sleep for 10 milliseconds to ensure the thread doesn't take up too much of our CPU's time. Next, we need to write the render function. First, we're going to read the view matrix from the module base plus the view matrix offset. 
and then we're going to iterate through every entity in our entity cache list. Then using our offsets, we're going to read the vector three coordinates for both the player origin and their eye position. Finally, we're going to use the wall to screen function to find both these 3D coordinates in our 2D screen coordinates and find out if they are both actually located on our screen instead of behind us. Finally, using the height, we're going to estimate the, the width of our player. And the last thing we need to do is actually use these coordinates to render a rectangle on our screen. Next, we need to write our wall to screen function. This translates our 3D wall coordinates into 2D screen coordinates, as well as checks if the enemy is actually in front of us on our screen. It works by multiplying our 3D vector by a 3i4 matrix, dividing our answer by the width of the fourth dimension, and then translating to get to another reference frame, and then doing small manipulation using our screen dimension to return our 2D coordinates. Next, return to our main.cpp file where we want to initially store the process ID and our module base address inside of our ESP namespace. Next, we want to create an STD thread, which will keep infinitely running our ESP loop so we can keep caching our entity pointers. Finally, in our while loop, replace the renderer frame function with the ESP frame function so we can call the one in our ESP namespace instead of the renderer namespace. And that should be your ESP complete. Don't forget to run CS2 in dash insecure and then launch your cheat from within Visual Studio. And now let's get ready for the showcase. <laughs> 